Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Born Political. I'm your host, Joe Delacruz. Uh, we have a special guest here tonight, a little uh, about the same as last week. We have somebody that's a, a candidate for office. In this case, uh, this gentleman will be running for the seat that I currently hold. <laughs> uh, I'm really excited. If you guys know the story about Andre Bumgarner and Joe Delacruz, uh, it's a long one. Uh, we, we, were t we, were t we were opponents. Uh, then, uh, then he was my treasurer. Uh, we've become great friends over the years, uh, and I'm really excited to have him. I'm excited to see him move on and come back for the seat. Uh, I'll be vacating uh, in January, and I'm, I'm very confident that this young man will be knocking on doors, and you will be seeing him in your neighborhood uh, and everywhere else probably over the next few months. Uh, and if you don't know him, hopefully this helps you get to know him a little bit better tonight. Uh, that's the point of my show, Born Political. Uh, like I'll repeat it again because if you haven't seen the show before, it's not a political show. Uh, I'm trying to cut through all that political uh, red tape, I call it, when we start judging people for not knowing who they are. Uh, and I just want to get down to the bottom of the person, who they are. So when you go in that voting booth or if you're dealing with someone in the community, you know exactly who they are. So tonight, welcome to the show, Andre Bumgarner. Welcome, my friend. How you doing? <laughs> great to see you, Joe. Uh, Thanks for having it's me. It's great to have you, man. <laughs> it's great to have you. So um, it, we, we were laughing because we, we know each other well enough where he can laugh at my picture in the <laughs> intro. Uh, you know, I'm the parade guy that wears just about anything at the parade. Uh, and I told Andre, I'm going to loosen him up a little. We're going to get him a four-leaf clover uh, jacket for next year or something like that. I, I've I always had bling. fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, you know, uh, so Andre, I mean, uh, a lot of this show about, is about getting to know who you are. Um, I think a lot of people in Groton already know you because you really haven't gone too far. Um, you're like me. I'm, I'm kind of a homer. I've kind of lived in this area my whole life, but I, I know you, but I've never interviewed you. So I really, I, there's going to be some things that I probably will find out that I didn't know. But so are you, you born and raised in Groton, or did you move here? Or? Born and raised in Groton, and, and first and foremost, thank you for having me on the show. No problem, uh, you, man. you opened things up and said that we we're opponents, and as much as that may be true, in my eye, we were competitors. Competitors. Um, because when we ran against each other. Uh, and that was in 2016. Hillary mm -hmm. Clinton and, and Trump were on the ballot. And um, it, things got very negative, not just at the national level, but it percolated in, in some of the local races as well. And I think you and I set a textbook example on how to run uh, honorable campaigns, keeping it above, above the belt, um, on, focused on the issues, focused on the people we served. Yep. And, um, you know, I, I just gained so much respect for you for... Um, keeping to your word, to, you know, running yep. a, a clean campaign, and, and that's the way it should be. Um, it's about the people. It's about the issues. We shouldn't, you know, get yep. into uh, that, that nasty politic. And so I think, I think um, it went both ways. And I remember that anyone that covered the story that year with pictures of us smiling, laughing, and talking to yeah. each other, whether we were campaigning on the, and, and we saw you in the neighborhood or if I saw you right at the polls, or if my son saw you and talked to you, yeah. it was more positive. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, and that's the campaign I wanted to run. It's one that, 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 I, that I got out of you. And I've been pretty lucky because even, even when uh, Ken Richards ran against me, yeah. it was a, another campaign where it wasn't somebody that was just trying to throw mud and mm -hmm. I didn't do that at him. And uh, I've, I've enjoyed my, my runs. I've seen other campaigns that are pretty nasty. I don't want to be part of one, but the, the, you never know. You never know what your opponent's going to do. But um, I, I was glad to have, have run against you. Um, again, though, back to the Groton thing. So you were born in uh, L and M or L and M, L and M, all the way in uh, London. Yeah, that's, that's my right. hometown. <laughs> Just want to know. So you're a London boy. That's really. right. That's right. And once upon a time, we both. Uh, now you obviously currently still uh, represent New London, but yep. Yep. Uh, with redistricting now, uh, our our good friend Chris Conley will have the opportunity to represent uh, New London. Yep. Uh, with yep. the redistricting, um, in this new seat now encompasses a piece of Stonington, yep. uh, in addition to uh, much of Groton. Yeah. Um, but to answer your question, yes, born at L&M, um, you know, grew up in, in Groton. Our yep. family moved here from East Lyme when I was about uh, five years old. Okay. Um, so did you go to East Lyme kindergarten? No, no. Actually, funny enough, do you remember uh, over at L&M, there was um, like a daycare center? Yeah, yeah. So I did my kindergarten there with a, um, a, a class of about four kids. Wow. So exclusive. I was very lucky. Yeah. Exclusive daycare. That's yeah. good. Yeah. So and um, and then I went to the regional multicultural magnet school for my um, my ele elementary and then uh, Isaac for middle school and then yep. for high school uh, up in um, Massachusetts. So while I never went to any Groton schools, I, I played uh, Groton City Little League 
you know, played for the city police yep. and was I very active and involved. Absolutely. Yeah. You so, know. so you went. So you. So you ended up when you went to Massachusetts. Oh, uh, were you drive? Were you commuting? Or no, you I lived state? up there. I lived. So you up lived there. in Massachusetts. See, I didn't know that about you. I, yeah. In my mind, I was thinking that you went to fish, but uh, so you you went to the the multi uh, multicultural magnet school in in Groton. Yes. Yep. Oh no, I'm sorry, New London. New London. In New, New London. London. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And then the Massachusetts one. So you boarded as a. As a high schooler, yeah. As a high schooler, yeah. From freshman year to senior year, <laughs> probably something that Joe Della Cruz probably wouldn't <laughs> no. be able to accomplish. No, it, it, I, I don't some know days if I felt like on my own. it felt like Hogwarts a little bit, you know. You're a kind of star ad kid, and you see kids from all over the world, you know, yeah. Hong Kong, South Korea, yeah, uh, Europe, and um, I had a lot of fun. Learned learned so much. Made great connections. So now, so um, you have, as you probably have friends all over the world, like people that you, that you met in high school. You still talk to them? Most or? definitely. Yeah. You do? Yeah. Have a visit? Uh, no, and I haven't, haven't gone to, Not yet. to, you know, their homeland, but that's definitely cool. on the bucket list. Well, I was born in Germany. I don't know if you know that about <laughs> yeah. me. I, I told my, I, when I first met my mother-in-law, I told her I was born in a tent because <laughs> me and Tammy went on a, we were, we were like on a, you know, third or fourth date and her mom asked me and I was just joking. Yeah, and, and our relationship developed rather quickly, and then three months later, she meets my mother and, and runs up to her and says, I can't believe you had your son in a tent. And my mom's <laughs> like, yeah, I can't either, because it didn't happen. <laughs> like, he was born in a nice hospital in Germany. But Now, was this the army base out there? It was the army base in Würzburg, yeah. or Frankfurt, I Frankfurt. guess. I don't okay. know. I, I was three, year, three months old when I came here. I have no, no recollection. But uh, it's kind of a badge of honor to say that you, you know, I was born yeah. in Germany. It's kind of, it's a neat discussion. Well, conversation started, but I don't remember any of it. Well, technically, my last name is German. Uh, how I got that, I don't know. You know, I'm I'm half uh, African American, well, a quarter African American, half Puerto Rican, and a quarter Panamanian. So now, now that's by uh, ancestry or by by, by ancestry. Now oh, you, I, you I know we, okay. we've had a, a few too many conversations about we've had a bunch uh, of them. <laughs> ancestry, especially some of your percentages. My, I'm two percent You want to go Nigerian. over that a little bit? Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> this show's not about me, but I am two percent Nigerian. Man. Yeah, I, who's interviewing you? Who here? Very very proud of that heritage. Uh, I'm proud of everything. I mean, it's just to me. When you, when you see the stretch out across the globe and you get to look at yours, to be in, dotted in different areas, I think is something else that's cool. It shows Absolutely. how people moved, you know, and who, and who you are. Not that, you know, who you are, I think, has a lot to do with where we came from. Oh, most definitely. You know, and, and can it, you imagine kids 20, 30 years from now? Oh, they're going to know mean, exactly. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There'll, there'll be a Facebook of yeah. their great, great, great grandfather. <laughs> yeah. Probably probably not their proudest moment looking at some of the stuff on Facebook, but <laughs> it'll be there for a, a thousand years now, you know, as long as long as they, uh, the computers still work, I guess. Yeah. There'll be, or somebody will find a disc of a... It, it is amazing how far we've come. So, so back to you. You're, at this point, you are you're graduated at 18 years old? Or That's right. At 18. And then... Straight into politics. I no, think, right? no. So I, okay, I, so I went to, I, I went down you. to Florida. You're now, like what, Florida. what's your what's your favorite saying about Florida? Oh, reti- Connecticut <laughs> retirees, we make them, they take them. <laughs> and 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 listen, if you're if you're someone out there that says, well, they take them because they're better on taxes, I got a whole <laughs> mantra that, that we do not have time for on this show. But I'll talk. That's about a whole it nother too. show. It's a whole nother Maybe show. Maybe a couple. It's his own show. <laughs> part yeah. one, part two, part. If three. I don't have a guest one week, I'm just going to talk about that. Uh, so you went to. So what'd you do in Florida? Uh, I went to Stetson University for a year. Okay. Yeah. Um, so for a year, um, great school. Yep. Just wasn't really the right fit. Okay. Florida has great weather, but they do have great. Wasn't weather, really yeah. crazy about Florida either. So yep. I came back, uh, took took a year off to kind of figure things out, and during the year off, I got the crazy idea uh, for about. Uh, you know, running for state representative, and you uh, did, and I did, I did. <laughs> and, so, and so now, so now you're 21, and obviously uh, the, at this point, I'm I'm 19. You're 19. 19. So the knock on you is, what does a 19 year old know? That's right. And but in your <laughs> mind, because you went to all these different schools and had different experiences, and probably read the Declaration of Independence and looked at the bottom and saw some other 20 year olds that signed it. Yeah. <laughs> and said, Why can't I run the state rep? Right. And uh, so you ran, and not, I know you knocked on a lot of doors. It's funny. We laugh because I, I think that same in, in the year after I was running for for a counselor, and it shows you how how unengaged we local politics. We you know you knew I knew who my councils were I knew who the mayor was, uh, but anything outside of that I kind of unless it was the president mm-hmm. I was that typical American that really didn't know a lot about who my who my politicians were but, or who my leaders were. You know, Joe, that that's the way it's supposed to be. We yeah. should we should have 
regular everyday working people on our boards, our councils, our yeah. legislatures. Because if you don't, how can you pass legislation without knowing how it will impact real working people? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's all that's walks the way of life. Be. That's and that's why the yeah. House, I think, I don't want to say the House is better than the Senate, but the reality is when it's you're, the people's house. It is. Yeah. It's the people's house. When you're when you're when you're running and you you're in a position where you have nine towns in some cases, um, there's there's people with different needs. Uh, if it's more localized, I think with a with a state rep. I mean, I, I, that's what I found. Um, and even the fact of of splitting between two towns, it's 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 a lot of pressure. I don't think a lot of people understand that. I know you have one person who, who will because of the phone calls that you get that aren't related anything to the government or to the business of the government, but a lot of That's personal right. issues and calls that come in that you know, people lost their insurance and don't know where to go. Or And in the case of the 41st, these aren't sleepy towns. You know, no. I know we're in eastern Connecticut a little more you know, rural and sprawled out compared to the eastern or the western side of the state. Yeah. But you know, Groton, New London, we are the epicenters of this region, you know, yep. the employment hub, certainly, you know, obviously with the unprecedented, unprecedented growth at EB yep. um, and, you know, Pfizer being here, our hospitals, um, but also net with Stonington, you know, th this is the tourism uh, epicenter of, I would say, Southern New England. Yeah. Um, and it certainly has become that more and more, especially, you know, since the pandemic. So yep. that, uh, you know, because of that, it keeps us on our toes. So I had Farouk Rajab on last week. And he spoke about uh, the Mystic Marriott. That was his first job in Connecticut, and that's what drew him. To, that's wow. what drew him to this area. Yeah. And you know, he, he mentioned that when he he was at these conventions that yeah. were nationwide, and people knew about the Mystic Marriott yeah. within the Mystic Marriott. Mm -hmm. So it was it was it's it's one of those hotels of distinction. Mm -hmm. uh, and then to go downtown Mystic and see what's been happening just in the last few years, that the the, the building and what's and what's going on, and it just looks nice. Central Hall being back up. That's right. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on down there, so there's going to be a lot, and 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 you'll be leaking over into a new district. I, I just started my journey. I like I said, I, I still thought I was going to run up until I think I called you three days after I decided not to to let you know, yep. um, because you know it's it is a huge decision, mm -hmm. and I didn't want people to that I knew I thought would run to find out by me on Facebook, um, and and you know for you to be able to to take the reins, say you know what I think I'm going to give it a try again. I think it means a lot. Uh, I think there's a lot of people out there that are that are that are rooting for you, and there's a lot of work to do. And no doubt, and <laughs> you know, I um, I w was really humbled by the fact that you had called me before your announcement. You know, it was uh, you had an announced the day after, um, called me you know, late after a council meeting, and we had a great conversation just about yeah. life, catching up. Yeah. But yeah. you know, in in some days, especially you know, um, if we want to fast forward a little bit getting elected, you know, serving the House, and certainly, you know, your six years, um, it, it can be thankless. You know, there are a lot of sacrifices, and, you know, uh, it's, it is a paid gig, but it's certainly not a, well, a full-time ho salary by hopefully any it's stretch. Paid, hopefully it's paid better. But for, <laughs> I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to set you up. I'm, I'm, I'm walking away from it, uh, and not, be, not because of the money, and I want to make sure people understand Absolutely. that. Uh, if I won the lottery tomorrow, I, I probably would have stayed. If I had the money where I could have just did the work, you know, I'm I'm at a point in my life where when you're 51, there's a countdown, Andre. You don't you're not <laughs> feeling the pressure, and you shouldn't because you're young. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you when you turn 51, you really start thinking about what your next plan is and move That's is, right. and if you're going to be able to one day not work. Because my whole life has been uh, this endless journey of working, and now there's like this little glimmer of light at the tunnel, yeah. and I want to make sure you know my wife and I are going to be comfortable or even be able to. You know, the the, the conversation I had with my wife was well. we'll you know, I could quit now, just and if her and I started eating cat food now, <laughs> we'd be used to our lifestyle, and then it wouldn't matter anymore. Uh, and and that's no listen. That's I, I joke, but um, it really is a, 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 a fiscal decision, financial decision. And we talked about this off air. Uh, that's not how our country was supposed to be. The country's supposed to be if you know. I'd love to see somebody that was a clerk at Walmart running. Um, but they, it's they, they can't. They you know it's. I want to see regular people run from regular jobs. We we need all facets. You know we have. You know I'm, I'm sick of hearing the people that can run and say, well, I don't. I'm not taking the salary. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people even, happened even with our president. A, a last couple of presidents I think didn't take the salary, and a lot of people are impressed by that. But I want someone that needs the salary. <laughs> yeah. I want someone that gets to be president of the United States that like, no, I can't give it up because. 
I'm still paying my mortgage at my house in Maryland or in Connecticut or so I can't give up that money because I have two houses now. And well, what, one of our U.S. senators, Chris Murphy, is like that. Yeah, you know, he, yeah, he's <laughs> homeless. He was homeless for a while, right? <laughs> <laughs> and he, he, you know, he um, he has a raising a family, a young family. Yep. Um, and yep. has made a lot of sacrifices, but um, you know, he does this because it's important to have strong voices for working families yep. in yep. all facets of government. You know, at the state level, federal level local level as we've seen you know in the you know prior to biden getting elected we can't take anything for granted no you can't you know yeah and so i i, I don't want to get away from you either yeah. because i think we we're talking uh I, I skipped up through the high school and all that other stuff yeah. but but we haven't even talked about your family yet either because no. yeah. now i i say born political because yeah. I, I think when i was you know my my father i still to this mm -hmm. day don't know if he's pop, if he's republican or democrat he don't talk to me about it <laughs> i know i know he's a, he's super intelligent and he uh -huh. has his opinions but he'd rather talk about bowling and karaoke you know he doesn't want to talk about he doesn't want to get involved with the screaming and yelling mm -hmm. and i get it it's awesome my mother on the other hand is is a very liberal democrat woman's rights she, she you know she was she imposed upon me the the need to understand that you know the importance of women and to respect women and that, that's what kind of drove me and a lot of my my ideas mm -hmm. from my mother's side, as far as political. Mm -hmm. um, now you, you know, you, mom and dad, are they, were there political conversations in the house, or was it? No, but public servants. You know, in the case of yeah. my father, you know, worked for the town of East Lyme for yeah. over twenty years in the, for the Water and Sewer Commission. So I'm at the um, convenience store about <laughs> three or four months ago. I hope you gave him some trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, and my my mother, you know, uh, she's a school administrator now, but uh, spent. You know, well over a decade in the classrooms over down, you know, in New London, um, and I think they instilled the importance of giving back to your community. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean you have to do it as a teacher or you know work, working for a town, but you can you know do it in it actually in the town hall in a yep. you know a volunteer capacity. You know, yep. just like I've, I've done on the town council, which you know, funny enough. Um, we almost traded seats because, yeah. uh, you know, right after uh, you had won the election, it took a year off and, and uh, you know, to just with life. And uh, shortly thereafter, uh, after well, becoming a Democrat, Morabsic, right? I was appointed to, uh, count, yes, uh, uh, Rich Morvat, Morabsic, uh resigned from the council. He moved down to, to the Sunshine State. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, uh, Mayor Patrice Granatoski, uh, former mayor now, uh, called me up and said, hey, you know, we have a vacancy and yep. Yep. Um, curious to see if you'd be interested in filling it. And, um, you know, ended up so, you know, saying, the hey, why not? What if, in. why not? That's right. And yep. literally sat in, in your old seat. Yeah. Um, yep. Did you get the gum uh, under the... No, <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. I don't do the gum, I don't do the gum trick. So, so, uh, so now mom and dad, so they didn't, they weren't talking, it wasn't a heavy political conversation. I, and I think... Or was it? Well, this uh, this guy from you know pretty slender, tall guy from Illinois started showing up on TV. Oh, okay. Um, and you, know, you are not the first person that's going to go here. <laughs> um, I think uh, the me the current mayor said the same thing when I had him on the show. Uh -huh. But you're going to mention uh, uh, the, some inspiration. That's right. Okay. That's I, right. I understand it. <laughs> Forty four. Yep. Uh, yep. So uh, former President Barack Obama, you know when he had spoke at that uh, DNC national convention in 2004. Yep. And then um, I think early 2007 announced he was running for president. I mean, I was hooked. Yep. Um, and just talk about a class act, somebody who uh, did it for all the right reasons, uh, took so many hits yep. for, um, for just... It's, it's interesting know, though, yeah, but, but yeah. Obama, was, Obama was your inspiration. Yeah. Uh, and then you ran it, and you ran as a Republican. That's right. And, uh, which shows that yeah. Obama. I, I don't think Obama spoke to one, to to one crowd. He spoke no. to. That's why he won in a landslide. He he spoke to service. That's right. I think he won I, Iowa. Yeah. I mean he yep. he won a yep. one of the congressional districts in in um, I think he won Missouri as well. Yeah. I mean uh, Indiana. Yeah. Which was, gave us uh, Pence. I mean. So he won across the map in the Midwest and along the whole East Coast, Florida, Ohio. Yeah. So and and he he did so because he could connect with, as you mentioned, a diverse uh, array of people. And yeah. 
that's the way it should be. You know, yeah. you, you shouldn't just talk to one, one crowd or, you know, one interest group. You should talk to the entire community because at the end of the day, you don't just serve or represent Republicans or Democrats. You serve everybody. Yeah. And, that, and, uh, and then back to your family again. And the reason I keep bringing up the family because I think it's so important that people understand you, you don't really know me if you don't know that my mother was this, this, this force that she had on me. Or the, yeah. When people meet me now, they know, they know who my mom is. Like, oh, I know where you get it from. Mm -hmm. Like if I sit down next to somebody at a bar or next to breakfast at a breakfast counter, yeah. I, I talk to them. Yeah. And that's something I get from my mom. <clears throat> it sounds like you know, knowing that your mom's a teacher, you probably, I understand now why you would go to a, a boarding school. You probably, it was probably just in the works. So you, but you have other siblings. That's right, right, I do. And did they all go to? Did they all go to different schools, magnets, and or was it? So my my sister followed my footsteps every step of the way, with the exception of high school. She went to the Marine Science Magnet School, which is an awesome school. school, amazing school, right yep. right here in the city, yep. city of Groton. Um, just wonderful staff, wonderful teachers. Kids are going to amazing I know. colleges. We've done a few things there, oh, yeah. and I've got to see the kids in action. And the curriculum, and the way that they're treated, uh, it's 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 just. And I think the the great thing about these magnets and the way it works, mm -hmm. is, you know, because not every you can't have a one size fits all, and that's, that's right. what we had for for years and years in yep. the country. And I think that definitely brings a different aspect or a different. It's a whole different feeling. My wife she fell in love with the school, so we tell all the kids too because we know kids had good experiences with it. Uh, and it sounds like your sister had a good experience. She loved it, and, okay. and a lot of the kids are very active in. Uh, sports as well, and they can participate in the sports from their their home districts. Yeah, um, which I think is great. A lot Your of people. Your sister's graduated now. Oh yeah, she she's at CCSU now. CCSU, um, yeah, state, she, state she's crushing school. it. Yes, great state school up in up in New Britain, hard hit in New Britain. Yeah, uh, which and, is and home to, of, home to my of, fiance. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, congratulations! <laughs> yeah. You know what? I haven't gotten that far yet because you have another sibling we can talk about too. Yes, of course, yep. and that, yep. that's my baby brother, Benjamin. Yep. Uh, now, Benjamin didn't go to the same schools as, as I did. He um, uh, went to S.B. Butler. Uh, in fact, uh, S.B. Butler, um, uh, the Grand Public Schools had to build a fence uh, around the, play, <laughs> the playground because one day he, uh, he, just kept he, went, walking. he went running. Yeah, he just kept walking. That's so, it. <laughs> yeah. um, but my, my brother, Benjamin, is, um, he has autism. He was yep. diagnosed when yep. he was, um, you know, Eight, about age two, yep. and um, he's loved my life. You know, growing up, I put him on on the bus even while I was serving up in Hartford. You yeah. know, the uh, every day before heading up for for session, I'd put him on the bus, and yeah. um, you know, he uh, now goes to school up in Windsor. You know, takes the the curtain van up there, um, but he's shown tre tremendous, remarkable progress over the years. You know, yeah. having conversations with people. Um, he certainly has his bad days, but who doesn't, right? Everyone does. And um, but I, I love both of them. Um, they they've taught me so much about life. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be the man I am without them. No, I've, um, I've heard you say a few times because I, I remember being at either an event or we coming coming from somewhere back where we, where we went up to Harvard together that yeah. time, and you know you're gracious enough to show me around Harvard when I was going through that horrible time in my life. Yeah. Uh, but you know, on the way back, he said, I, "I said, why don't you just come to our house and hang out?" And he said, "No, I got to take care of my brother. Yeah. So and so is going to be gone at this hour. I need to be back." And um, and that that speaks a lot to you, but also to your family. Um, and and when you love someone like that, you know, it's just you want to make sure you're there for them. Uh, you'll be able to be there for them. You get elected now, and you go up, back up. Um, you know, th these are experiences that I that I talk about that people need. If you're going to be in Hartford, um, you know, it, it's it's things that happen to you in your life that usually inspire you to do something. Now, there's going to be a lot of opportunities where there's where autism awareness things happen, where there's, there's just different things that you're going to be able to get involved with, get on committees, or, or even be able to be the legislator that sits on the board uh, that understands what it's like to have a, you know, uh, a, a family member that needs that little bit of extra help. And how do you surround, how does the community surround that? And uh, there's no state I'd rather be in. Uh, then Connecticut. We, we talk about the rate of our taxes a lot of time, but um, do they have those same services in other states? They, they don't. There's other states that have them probably as good as us, but I think we've done a good job here. You know, Absolutely. And that, you hit it right on the head. You know, we live in a state that gives back to our families and, and our, especially our youth. Um, but right here in Groton, I mean, hats off to our, our board of ed, our superintendent. Absolutely. You know, a lot of towns, you know, when when they see a, a kid who has special needs, you know, they say, oh my gosh, they, they, the first thing they think about is the price tag, but Imp here, that's budget. not. The yeah. first thing they think about is what services does this child need? 
Yeah. And so hats off to the Groton Board of Ed and certainly Superintendent Susan Austin, who um, yeah. you know, they've done great work, not just for kids with special needs, but um, I think all, all kids in Groton. And I, I think if, you, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna judge yourself as when I coach baseball or when I look at any company, you're, you're only as strong as, as if you can help the people that need the whole most help. That's right. And it's definitely been proven here in Grind. I've, I've heard arguments of people saying, well, you don't want to be the best because then folks will leave their town just to come to you. Yeah. And uh, that's absolutely no, there's no, <laughs> there's no reasoning behind that. Yeah. Because if you can make something better and actually make people a part of a community because there, there's folks I think that, that end up doing really well, whether, whether they're working at, at a grocery store or, or if they happen to work at Big Y, even if just pushing carriages, if they're able to, to, to be taught certain things and, and be part of a community, to me, all that's better. And in the end, it's better for everybody. And, and why wouldn't you do it? Why wouldn't you? I'm not, I'm not gonna let you take that slogan on. <laughs> Never. Not, you can't have maybe a maybe one the one of us for all of us. Yeah, but. yeah, you can take that. I I, 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 always, I always envisioned me losing a race, and then I was gonna have a huge "Why didn't you" T-shirt made up. <laughs> <laughs> why didn't you party or something like that? Um, we we are we're almost coming up. It's there's only oh, wow. a few minutes left. I'm telling yeah. you, uh, I, I don't prepare because a half hour. The people that have been on the show have all been fascinating. I knew our show was going to go fast. We have a lot to talk about anyway. This is yeah. not going to be our last show together. Um, I want to make sure that, you know, throughout this campaign, uh, th there'll be some things that come up. There'll be, they'll, there's going to, you know, there'll, there'll be mailers that come out that you put out that, <laughs> and, and we're going to have to talk about stuff like that on the way up. But you're running all the way up to November. I may, I hate the sound to sound like it's soon, but it is. Uh, and we only have a couple minutes. So I just, if you want, uh, if there's anything you wanted to add, I mean, about your family, anything you yeah. want to talk about? You know, go for it. No, just to wrap things up, I mean, since, um, you know, since, uh, well, November of last year, I, I'm uh, now an engaged man. I forgot uh, about that, man. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, no doubt. Thank you. Congratulations Thank on you. that. Um, the love of my life. Kayla. You already married your better half. Yes, well, you, she is most definitely you, my better yeah, half. You, you stepped up. Uh, you, you, <laughs> yeah. you married up. Well, yeah. you married up. <laughs> uh, but, no, I, I'm, uh, you know, she she's definitely out of my... Uh, my league, if you will. I hope I said that right. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, no, she she's absolutely incredible. Also politically active. Yeah. Uh, now a Groton resident. Yeah. Um, you know, yep. we now have a place together. Welcome down to here in the city, Kayla. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but uh, no, she she's enjoying it, and um, we have a little pup, Lola. She's a a Yorkie and oh Maltese. God. You know, my wife is Lola, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm Lolo. Tammy's Lola. So you got you got the dog, you got the you got the the, the place, yep. you got the girl. I mean, uh, all you need is one one more thing, and that's the forty first. That's right. Like, uh, but I, I a lot of confidence on how how hard you're gonna work, and uh, obviously I'll be helping out and, and doing what I can. Uh, I'm looking forward to to the run here. Um, you know, we only have one minute left. Oh man, it, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> when I told you it was gonna, when you asked me, you said how how quick and. Whenever you mention a half hour, and if Joe Delacruz is involved in that half hour, especially <laughs> with another politician, um, it's going to go way fast. And yeah, it did. you lose it track was, of time. We, we did. Yeah. We, we lose track. Uh, so, guys, uh, this is another episode of Born Political. Uh, it's a, another, another, another day where you could watch a show or listen to a podcast. Listen, we're on, we're on a, a few different venues. You, if you have Spotify, uh, you can listen to it while you're driving. All the episodes will be up there. Andres won't be up there tonight but it'll probably be up tomorrow night sometimes. It'll be on YouTube. Uh, I'll be sharing the link with Andre. Uh, I want to thank you guys for coming here this Thursday. Again, we'll see you next week. I'm not sure who the guest is yet, but you never know with Born Political. <laughs> uh, we'll see you. Andre, thank you so much for coming on, man. Love you, Joe. Uh, good luck, and uh, I'll, be, I'll be reading about it. Looking That's forward awesome. to it. Oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> the, the, it's, 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 it's,